Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Kirishima X listener, it's 10,000 Paper Stars by Suga Cookies on AO3, the link will be in the description, so go give them kudos and comments on all of those things. Let's go ahead and get into it. When had Kirishima Ajiro fallen for you? When had you caused the walls that had formed around himself to collapse in on their own weight? When had you caused his heart to churn with fever and adoration for you? Your first year in UA was one filled with too many events for everyone to count. The horrifying USJ attack that started off everything was traumatic, not to mention the rescue team for Eri that Kirishima was involved in. Yet you were there the entire way, encouraging on with your saturn sweet grin and the playful banter that made him forget the events at hand for a few minutes. How was he not supposed to fall in love with you? No, not fall. He had willingly stepped into the space that was your open heart, purposely sinking past a gravity-free vacuum where he found nothing else but you. Long strips of paper sit before him, their shiny designs insignificant as his fingers work them into their finished shape. Each loop is firmly pressed before the remaining length of the paper is wrapped around itself. The leftover tail is tucked away neatly, and with a few presses of his fingernails, Kirishima finishes a singular paper star. He drops the finished star into a jar, amongst many others. The color is reflecting off the holographic paper that reflects the light of his lamp in dizzying rays of blue and purple. Picking up a pencil, Kirishima writes the next number down onto a sheet of paper that is covered with trails of pencil lead. Only 7,464 stars left to go. Kirishima picks up yet another strip of paper, and his fingers are quick to repeat the same process that he has done over and over for the past few weeks, muscle memory taking over as he drifts off into thinking about other things. Is he really putting in this much effort for you? What if you just threw away all of his stars? No, that's not right. You'd say thank you, and he would get to see your pretty smile. You weren't that cruel to deny his gift. Kirishima can't help the flush that tints his cheeks when he thinks about you again. He's giddy with his teenage infatuation that has him in a vice, and he's more than glad to be dragged along by sleepless nights that tell his days apart as he dreams about you. Each lesson in school has him glancing over to see your peacefully sleeping form, before ectoplasm or midnight whacks you over the head with a chalkboard duster. He finds beauty in the way you treat others, your kind words and gentle smiles making the blood beneath his skin burn with afflicted affection. The way your eyes sparkle when you finally finish a difficult math equation makes his chest ache in a way that he can't describe as he covers it up with a grin and an affirming, good job. When would he ever tell you he loved you? Graduation comes quickly. Your three years in UA together are fleeting, and before you know it, you're standing outside in warm sunlight, basking in the chatter and excitement of your graduating third years. Many clutch their caps or certificates in their hands, some crying, others taking photos to preserve this memory. You're standing aside from it all, almost viewing the scene like a stranger, but a presence looms close to you and you can't help but turn your head to see the sweating redhead that occupies your field of vision. Edgy, did you know when you fold a paper star, you replace one that falls in the sky? You're stunned by his random statement. You can't help but burst into giggles, playfully pushing at his strong chest. <laughs> what do you mean? That sounds like bullshit. I'm not kidding, look, uh, here, take this. A rather large jar is shoved into your hands, and your eyes widen at the colors that shine through the cold glass. Thousands of individually folded paper stars strain against their transparent prison, winking at you as their light shifts to show off their shiny hue. From me to you, for graduation. Shit, Sarah said this would be easy. Kirishima let out a loud groan, and his cheeks almost turned the same color as his hair. You're still shell-shocked, the jar becoming dead weight in your hands. You hold the sweat and tears of three years' worth of effort. The burden is great, and for a second, you find yourself wanting to flee. 
I really like you so much. I I'm not kidding. I folded these all for you and wanted to confess a long time ago, but uh, things kind of happened, you know? You can only numbly nod along as your heart quickens in its pace. It fills you with anxiety that courses through your veins. How had you not noticed this before? Kirishima stands before you, tall and mighty. He is a brightly glittering star of hero training with a gold heart, his affection leaking through cracks that shine in white, hot luminosity. How are you supposed to compare to him? You're a warming orange, barely flickering to life with a fusion of lessons and experience that have yet to settle into your bones. Yet Kirishima sees you, burning too hot, spinning too quickly, sinking into his heart and welding every single bit of him together into something that adores you with his entire being. I would like to date you, uh, only if you want, of course. <laughs> Kirishima's awkward laughter sends wave after wave of confusion into your brain. You're not quite sure how to react, and your lips move faster than your brain. I would love to. Kirishima can't deny the heat that floods his cheeks, and his heart that palpates so quickly he's sure it's about to leap out from his chest. He leans in, hands holding your forearms that are still bearing the weight of stars and dreams. Can I kiss you? His voice is tantalizing, and the temperature between the both of you spirals too much for you to control. You're dizzy with how close he is to you, and you nod, not trusting yourself to speak. His lips plant themselves firmly against your own, and you swear that sparks are flying. Your eyes squeeze shut, and Kirishima's hand goes to your cheek. His touch is tender and soft. Thank you. Time stops for no one, and the hands of an invisible clock continue to tick away, even as you don't pay any attention to it. The jar of stars now sits heavily on a shelf in your home. A decoration that occasionally brings up memories of a youthful past, dreams that were now a reality. Framed photos of dates and events decorate the walls, one of a Disneyland date, a pair of Mickey ears perching on both of your heads, another with Kirishima at his surprise birthday party, his stunned grin face was a gem, and he only begrudgingly agreed to let you put it up after a day of pleading. You pick up a teacup in your hands, the wedding band that wraps itself around your ring finger clinking against the china pleasantly. The house is quiet as you sit down on the worn sofa in the living room. The material accepts your weight with silence, cupping your form as you relax against the material. Your eyes linger upon the bandage that uncapsules your thigh, phantom pain laces through it, and your eyes flutter shut out of reflex. The memories replay in the back of your mind like a sick horror movie. The red bullet moves in slow motion, Kirishima's mouth wide open in a wordless scream. You can't move your legs. You feel the piercing of your hero suit as the bullet slides past the skin and fat, implanting itself into the veins with an apathetic thirst for murder. A gasp for air leaves your lips as you cradle the warm teacup, balancing it on your thighs. Everything was over in those few seconds. All the training you had pushed yourself through, the battles you faced, all for nothing. The unfamiliar feeling of unease floods you. You take a sip of your tea, trying to calm your nerves that are screaming at you to run. Kirishima will be back soon. You'll be fine. You glance towards the clock that's mounted on the wall, looking at its ticking hands for guidance. Three, two, one. Your house erupts into a volcano of blue flames. You don't even have time to react, as you feel the stinging heat against your skin, and all is gone before you can even recognize its presence. The teacup you were holding shatters, spilling the hot drink in a pitiful attempt to quell the fire. Edgy, you attempt to scream at the overwhelming pain that overcomes you. You're ripped of the right to even process what is happening. Instead, your jaw remains unhinged in a soundless gape as your lifeless body falls limp to the charred ground. Kirishima sees the flames as he's walking back home, his earbuds stuffed into his ears as he replays the song that Kyoka released the other day. He nearly drops the grocery bag that he holds in shock. His legs move before he can tell them to, 
and his heart falls into his feet as he rounds the corner. He is just in time for the main show, just before the curtain falls on it all. Kirishima sees you, lying on the ground. Flames lick the wall of the house, and Kirishima lifts an arm to ward off the heat dashing in before he can think of anything else but saving you. His quirk activates itself in a response to the temperature that sends sweat down the back of his neck. He reaches forward for you, hand attempting to grab your own, but part of you disappears the second he touches you. Your body turns to ash. Kirishima can't move as what remains of you is mere dust on his fingers, tainting him. Baby? Sweetheart, wait, no. His cries are choked with tears as he looks up. Rage filling him like an overflowing glass of water, leaking from his eyes in streams of unfiltered hurt. His heart clenches, rushing blood saturated with anger and hurt through his body that nearly causes him to cave in on himself there and then. Kirishima's eyes land on a jar of stars that sits on a flaming shelf. The glass is cracked from the heat, releasing the paper from its years of jail into a land of purgatory. Small flames of blue lick the paper greedily, burning the colored stripes into dust that no longer takes form. Dreams that were no longer. A photo frame clashes to the ground, physical reminders of your past love disappearing as the fire eats away at the paper and wood, uselessly trying to satiate its void-like stomach. Kirishima isn't sure how he's supposed to react. He feels like a ghost, filling an empty shell that is his body. Kirishima stares down at your burnt body. His head spins with confusion, and his heart beats so quickly, spurting blood out with each rushed contraction, only fueling the pit that consumes him from the inside out. Smoke rises from his stomach to his throat, choking him of words, filling his eyes with tears once more. They run down his face in unabandoned glee, giggling the entire way as Kirishima's hands clench themselves into fist. Yeah, yeah, of course I got them, boss. Don't even have a little faith in me. A prideful voice echoes from the other end of the house. Kirishima looks up, vision blurred, and he doesn't bother to wipe away his tears. For once in his life, he has to abandon you. He casts his gaze down and knows that this image will be seared into his brain for eternity for 10,000 years and more. Kirishima gently picks up the wedding band that lingers on the soiled ground. He'd kill them, whoever did this. All right, so that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed. I know it's a bit more angsty, but music link, fanfic link, discord link, and thumbnail art link will all be in the description. I made the description nicer, so go check it out. I hope you have a great rest of your day, night, whatever, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!